Hello, in this video, I'm going to discuss uh, how to externalize uh, application properties from uh, Spring Microservices uh, using uh, Spring Cloud uh, Config Server. Um, when, uh, when you have multiple microservices moving through a release cycle from uh, different uh, environments like for development, test, UAT, production, etc., traditionally, um, as we move along, we keep updating the properties uh, like database strings, uh, message broker parameters, uh, email server properties, uh, as they're different from uh, development to production. Uh, but with the microservices, especially when you have many microservices like 20, 100, 50, 200, uh, it's, a, it's a hassle, it's not productive. Uh, keep doing it for each and every microservice. So Spring Cloud uh, Config Server resolves this issue by moving the properties out of uh, the applications and uh, centralizing them. Uh, so there is no need to keep updating properties from the one environment to the next as application uh, moves along in the release process. So this offers a lot of flexibility and the speeds up the entire deployment cycle. With the config server, you have a central place to manage the properties across all the environments, which is a cool thing. Um, so, first thing we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to set the config server. Uh, it's a very very easy process. Uh, let's go to let's get started. Let's go to um, a Spring Initializer uh, website. Uh, where you can download an empty Spring Boot project. You need to add uh, only two dependencies. Basically, one is a web dependency. Um, web dependency, we, need, we don't need that. Uh, the next one is a config server dependency, not the client server dependency. That's all we need. Uh, once you're done, we can uh, Click on the generate project, just download the project. Once you have the project, or import into one of your IDEs. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here. In my case, it's, uh, I use uh, IntelliJ, you can use Eclipse. So the only thing you have, actually there are only a couple of things you have to do. The first thing you have to do is add this annotation uh, to enable config server. It's like any other microservice uh, with an addition of this annotation uh, enable config server. Uh, that's pretty much uh, well, what you need. But for the config server to serve you properties, it needs to be pointed to a source, like a database or a file system or a Git repo, something. So in a, if in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do with the Git repo, which is a, a typical setup. So. Uh, go, go to anywhere in your system and just create an empty folder. Uh, in, in my case, I created this folder here. And then go inside there and add a property file. Could be any name, as long as it has a uh, properties ex file extension. Uh, and the, in that one, just uh, add a property called message and add a value. Hey, I'm from a development environment. Uh, once you have that, uh, save it and go ahead and uh, uh, commit to your Git repo. You may have to do git uh, init, initialize a Git repo and uh, add this file and then uh, do a commit. Uh, and, and once you have that uh, Git repo, it's in the Git repo and everything, uh, all you have to do next is basically you have to add this Git URI and point where that property file is, uh, to that folder, not to the file, uh, the folder where a property file exists, um, which, uh, which is a git repo. So when, once you've done that, th that's pretty much it. Uh, you're done. Uh, and then go ahead and start it. And let's uh, verify if it's working correctly. To do that, you have to go to this URL here. Uh, this is the URL. So if you notice this, this one here match exactly, uh, exactly 
this one here the file name without the uh, without the extension this part here has to match this part here to check if it's working correctly if it is working correctly you got to see, you, you'll see whatever you added in the a property file so a message uh, um, a property from a uh, config server for development environment which is exactly what we have in the property file so this confirms that config server is up and running and uh, uh, it's serving it's ready to serve properties so now uh, other thing is uh, if you have uh, if you um, for different environments all you have to do is uh, create different branches Right now, if you notice, this is on, uh, uh, I think it's in the master branch. Uh, yeah, it is on the master branch. Uh, I created for, for, the, for this video, I created a new branch called uh, production. And uh, in, that, in that one, I have a different text. So for example, check out production. So now it's in production. Uh, let me go back. Uh, now it says I'm a property uh, from production uh, for production environment. So you can use uh, different branches for different environments. Uh, you can also use database. You can also use different uh, Git repositories if you want for different environments. But uh, for this video, I'm going to focus on using different branches for different environments. So now you have two branches. Uh, one has a property for production environment. One has a pro property for uh, uh, development environment. So uh, so that's all. That, that's pretty much it. I think you're now you're ready to go. Uh, one thing though, you have to add a server port. Uh, just to check, uh, just to specify where uh, where you want config server to run. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, now you you verify that it's running, um, and you can see the property here. So now let's go to the uh, let's create a client client application uh, to test the config server. So again, you have to go to go back to the Spring initializer. Uh, this time, instead of adding config server, you add config client that's the, that's that's the only difference it's so easy uh, once you have that generate project it will create an empty spring boot project uh, the one thing though usually I, I like I use gradle so you can change if you want gradle or maven um, so uh, once you have that let's go to the client application so you got to do a couple of things first thing is in your bootstrap the, the application you just downloaded it doesn't have bootstrap property file uh, so you have to add it manually so go ahead and add bootstrap properties or bootstrap AML file uh, in the resources folder uh, you can also I think you can do also the application properties the only thing is bootstrap uh, prop gets a higher precedence than application properties uh, the, it gets activated before application properties so that's the key thing here so in the bootstrap properties add application name which is AI main app uh, here uh, the key thing here is this one here this name here has to match exactly name of this that's how uh, config server associates the properties for different applications so they both have to match um, and then you specify where the the config server is running. Uh, remember, uh, here we specified, hey, run my server in this port, 8888. Uh, eight, 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 eight. So specify that. And then uh, you have to specify which branch you want config server to use to serve your properties. If you don't specify any branch, by default, it's gonna get the properties uh, from a master so let's run with the uh, less uh, that's pretty much uh, all you have to do the only thing though for testing I would say add this new uh, rest controller I'm gonna I added the link I'm gonna add the link down uh, below to my uh, git repository so you can download the code from there and take a look I'm also gonna add link to my blog post for additional reference if you need uh, 
But tell you the truth though, it's so simple. Uh, you 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 can figure out easily yeah, by yourself within a few minutes. So add uh, add this code here uh, uh, to your main main class. Uh, we'll talk about the refresh scope a little later. Uh, once you have that, uh, I think that's pretty much it. You need uh, all you need. Let's start the server. This is the client. Let's start it. <clears throat> okay, it's up and running. And let's go to run this. Hey, I'm a property from config server for development environment, um, which is a master. So check out master. So this is the this is where it's getting from. Uh, master development environment if you want to get the properties for production environment uh, all you have to do is uh, go back to your client application specify add this additional property a label property here specify hey give me the properties from this branch not from master uh, which is for development um, I'm using master for development in this case, but you're not supposed to do that in a, in a real um, setup. Uh, so once you have that, just to restart this. So now it's gonna ask config server, hey, give me the properties from a production branch. And uh, let's go here. See that, it's a production environment. That's pretty much it, guys. So there is a, there is not nothing much um, to it. The so the fi final thoughts, though, as I was saying before, I just keep a couple of things in mind. Uh, Git uh, repository is only one of the options. You have other options. You can take a look at those also. Uh, and also remember, Bootstrap gets a higher precedence uh, than uh, application properties. Oh yeah, w one more thing I wanna just to give you a brief. Um, Brief, uh, I think explanation is, you know, I mean, when you have property files, uh, you know, usually we have like usernames to usernames and passwords uh, for databases, you know, email servers and etc. So you can uh, specify, you know, the properties here straight, uh, you know, straight up. Or uh, for security, you want you want to do in a in a real uh, production environment, you want to encrypt them. So you can uh, the way to encrypt them is actually Spring Config Server as a REST endpoint called encrypt, so like here. So you can do this. You can curl uh, and then uh, you know specify your password. Once you do that, it gives you the encrypted password, and take that encrypted password and uh, put it here. Um, with cipher in the front. That, that's that's all you have to do for encryption. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, there is nothing much to it, as I said. Uh, please, uh, uh, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, add comments. Um, all right, thank you.